it's a little tricky with colored pencil so it may not actually work it sort of works When did we do the other eye? Oh, did we not? Did you not do the other eye? Uh, no, I think you were teaching somebody else the other eye, and then you told the rest of us to start doing the fur. Oh, okay, all right. Then we will do the other eye. So, uh, can you put your hands up if you haven't done the second eye? Okay, all right, all right. You know what? I'm going to do it again, and it's this one, is it, Lydia? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me just uh, put this back. I just want to shorten this eye. And so I have that done. And I need to find black. I had everything but black. So uh, I need to find that. I will use plan B. I'll put green over my brown. Okay, there's my picture. All right, so I'm just going to try and erase this. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not going to try and erase it. I'm going to go over it bit by bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to retrace my steps. All right, Lydia. All right, so what I wanted to do, first of all, was to make sure that the eyes were wide enough apart. So I looked at the nose, and you've got the nose. Lydia, you've got the nose? Yes. Okay, excellent. So it's pretty much equally uh, distant from the sides of the nose on either side. So what I'm saying is it's like, what, half an inch or a little bit less from the nose to the eye. If I put my pencil up there, there's like half an inch. And then this one's roughly the same. I mean, it's a little bit smaller on that side, but it's not too bad. I think my nose might be a little bit uh, bigger on this side than it should be and maybe this needs to come over but they're not you know it's not as though this one is far away and this one is is close by so they're basically the same distance away from the side of the nose so you could put a dot over there so if i had to take the nose and that corner it goes off at an angle so this would be vertical and then this would be the angle so you can do that you can do that on your picture on your photograph and see what that angle is. But it, 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 you know, if you can just see it without measuring it, that's fine as well. Okay, and then what I need to do, after I've figured out where the corner is, um, I want to put a little line to get these uh, eyes in line with one another. So the whole face is off at an angle. We had the eyes and then the nose, and then this was the mouth, but it's no longer. So they're at the same angle. So I would put a little mark over here once I have figured out that line. And then I'm going to do the same for the bottom of the eye. So my eyes, this one on the left is a little bit longer than the one on the right. But it's roughly the same. So if I put that like that, you can probably see it. So once I've measured that, although on the photograph this one does look a bit wider. So maybe, yeah, let's make it just a little bit lower than that one. This one's kind of closed. It's kind of little bit narrower or is this one's a bit wider so when you put this one make it a little bit lo lower down so a little dash over there a little dash over here and then the width of the eye is roughly the same as the other one so if you have um, this eye in what you can do is this is you've probably seen artists doing this like putting the pencil tip over here um, and then putting your fingers where the edge of the eye was so you get this length and then kind of gauging where that one is well that would be much longer than that one i think my eye is too big on this side um okay so what what you can do do that so take this eye measure it like that and then do it over here and put a dot down so my dot would be over there and then if i had to join that together i realized this eye was too big so i then i would need to narrow it but this is a good way of starting it off. So get this width and put it over here. And then very lightly, I'm just going to do it over here. So say you had a dot over here, a 
and a dot over there, and then you have a little line there and a little line there. So you should have something like that. Let me make it a little darker so you can see it. All right, so when you've got your guidelines and guide points, you just want to very lightly, don't use a colored pencil because you won't be able to erase it, but you want to join it together roughly in that leaf shape, which is the eye. And then just have a look at it and see whether it looks too big or too small. So before you even color it in, you're just going to gauge it and see whether it looks odd or if it fits. All right, does that make sense, Lydia? Uh, yeah, I think so. OK. All right, in the meantime, I'm going to do two things at once, OK? I'm actually going to do the fur at the same time. So we're, I'm, I'm multitasking. All right, what am I doing with the fur? Uh, okay, I'm going to go over here, seeing as I was doing this eye. All right, so I'm just using my brown. We'll come back to the eye in a second, Lydia, okay? All right, so I'm just... I think my cat's going to be a little oranger than on the photographs, because this brown is quite orange, and I quite like it. Okay, so little lines so that I can keep the feeling of the hair and um, it's also shading, it's shading the shadows and doing the hair and then watching out for the light bits, like there's a light bit going over here so at this point I'm going to make it a little lighter and then I may just give myself a little line as to where that fur comes around the mouth so it comes over like something like that and then I want to balance it on the other side so it doesn't have to be as exact well it doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph but it should look symmetrical on your picture so I just want to make sure and maybe you can see I think you can see that so I just want to make sure the white part looks balanced on both sides all right and then I'm just going to Put some more fur over here. And then same, I'm just going to do that over here. So mine's turning a little orange because I said I was going to, but I think I'm going to bring some grey back as well. Alright, so the thing about this part and that part against the white is there's lots of white in it but it's much darker looking than the actual white part of the fur. So I want to try and make sure I make it dark enough so that the white looks bright, but then not too dark, so it looks like there's no white in it at all, it's, if you understand what I'm saying. It's kind of a balance between the two. Okay, so I just need to find... Um, yeah, like I said, the one thing that I forgot to put out was black, but I found a grey, so that'll do. All right, Lydia, I'm going to come back to your eye in... A couple of minutes. I just want to get this fur started. Okay, so when I'm... Okay, I'm putting my grey in. This is just the dark... It's like the shadow colour as well as the dark fur. So as I'm doing it, I'm drawing lighter where I see it lighter and then darker where I see it darker. And I'm just keeping going. If I stop and think too much and I'm going to get something that doesn't look smooth or relating to the other parts. So I want to keep going and I'm looking at my photograph as I'm going. Okay, there's a part over here that's blurry around the face, so I want to make sure I keep... I, well, I, I don't want to go too far into that because that's kind of easy to do, it's just a, a tone. So all the detail can come in this little part of the cheek. And then over here I'm going to put, I'm making the fur a little shorter, my marks, my fur marks are a little shorter. So a lot of times when I'm drawing it's just putting the marks down, putting enough of them down and then sitting back and having a look at them and seeing if they're going in the right direction. Alright, and then I'm going to do the other side. So the little shadow coming from the eye, there's actually another, I know I was going to go to the other side, I just want to make this shadow on the nose just a little darker. 
because it happens on the other side too so I just want to balance that out a little bit okay sorry just have to readjust there is a camera in my way all right okay so if those of you that are doing the fur just you want to keep going you want to make sure that you're changing your tone which means you're changing from light to dark as you're going along so you have to keep an eye on when it's going darker when it's going lighter and then there's part of it is shadow and part of it is the pattern in the fur so you, you just got to keep an eye on that so using a pencil is a nice way of doing it you kind of get just the basic light and dark going on and then on top of that you can put your color in but you don't have to do it that way a lot of artists will do the pencil or just no maybe not a pencil but maybe just a brown color um, just to get everything laid out and then they'll add the color after that okay so I will be back to that in just a second and I'm going to go back to the eye so what I did I took I think I took green which well I mean I know I took green but I think maybe it was this green so I drew let me use this pencil I try to so we've got two highlights in both eyes so this eye has to really mirror this eye or vice versa so I put the two highlights roughly where they would be on the other eye so this eye slants that way but the light is kind of doing the same thing because it's coming from the same light source so even though this eye goes that way and this eye goes that way the light on the eye is at the same angle so this left one is lower than the right one this left one is lower than the right one it's not a huge deal but it does make it makes it look authentic it makes the eyes look like they're in line with one another and then I uh, there's lots of shadows over here but the first thing I did was take my green and just shade everywhere except for the highlights in just a flat layer of green and then I think I took my brown and I put a little of brown very lightly shading over there because I had one on that eye and then this looks like gray or blue maybe I put some blue in um, I think it was blue but darker at the top and um, because the lid is casting the shadow you can actually see if you look in the photograph which actually I'm going to do right now there is a pretty dark shadow on this side of the eye and it's from the eyelid and that's on both sides it just happens to be a little darker on this eye over here I see that yeah okay and then I'll just reinforce this one over here and then the shadow comes down on this side of the eye uh, just as it went on that side of the eye and there's a little shadow over here I'm going to put a little shadow in on this side too and then around the eye when I come across my black pencil I made this a nice dark ring and I a lot of you did that you actually did that really nicely you had these nice black rings around the eye so you can do that and then your pupils should be in line with one another so they're slightly skew this one does go more at this angle and this one kind of goes a little bit straighter mine isn't going quite as straight as in the photograph in the photograph it goes more like that mine is not quite doing that but that's because one eye is leaning towards this side of the face and the other eye is leaning to the other side. So this pupil should aim kind of down there and this pupil, which I may correct maybe, uh, should aim more over there. Maybe I'll just straighten it out a little bit. May make that one just a little bigger. It, if, yeah, my, my eyes don't look too bad. It doesn't need, if it looks odd, and off then you need to adjust it if it's fine then it's probably fine okay so um, if you have any other questions Lydia just stop me and let me know and everybody else as well all right so uh, where am I I'm gonna go back to the fur all right so I'm carrying on with this side I'm still doing the patterns on the fur and the shadow and then I just I'm gonna draw a little line over here because 
the fur comes to an end, it kind of sticks out and then there's a shadow underneath. So there's, there's kind of a shape to this part of the face. It comes like this and this one kind of comes around like this and I know it's not very subtle Wait, this needs to be a little bit bigger to just draw a line when there's fur but I just want to give myself and you a guideline of what I'm doing so there's this part of the face that comes up to the mouth that I'm sketching in and then I'll adjust if I need to and I do want to get rid of this line okay, so yeah as you as you carry on with your picture you find that lots of the original lines that you made are not quite helpful anymore. Alright, so I'm just taking a quick look to see if my cat looks alright. And he does. Oh, okay, I just need to make his face a little smaller. Okay. Alright, so that's fine. I'm going to put a little fur down here. I mean, it's sorry, a little shadow. And then what I'm going to do with my shadow is uh, let it kind of just feather disappear into the muzzle above his mouth or her mouth. So I'm just making little furry marks. So my line is actually disappearing, so it didn't actually do too much uh, damage to the subtlety of the picture. All right, and then this goes up here. We've got some white uh, whiskers, which I might just put in afterwards with chalk because trying to draw those and shade around them is a little difficult. So you know what, I'm just going to, I mean it can be done and if you love the idea you can definitely do that. But I just, I'm more interested in the shade around here so I'm, I'm going to do that. So at this point my shading is giving shape, three dimensional shape to the cat and um, giving a sense of the fur. So it's got two things that it's doing. Okay. And then over here the whiskers actually become, so I might just leave those in because the whiskers become the fur. It's like they're one and the same thing. So what I'm doing over there, I'm actually making the shadow look like the fur, and I may even take my eraser, yes, and then just trying to raise in between those lines just to give a little sense of the hair coming out. So my marks are really acting out the hair, and then over here I'm just going to let that shade away, or fade away. Okay, all right. We're getting there. All right, so I just want to carry on with the chin just for a little bit more before I look at your pictures, because I just want to get um, the shape of the face and the stuff around it. So I'm giving myself a little guideline for the chin. And I see it's longer on this side. We're looking slightly on uh, at the cat from the right-hand side. So this length is longer than this length. So I've put that in. And then what I'm going to do, I'm actually, I'm changing I'm holding my pencil like a spoon now because I want to make big marks. What I'm trying to do, and I don't want to go too far into the white, but I want to give a sense of shade on the outside of the face because the cat's face is in the light and then everything else, and I just have to keep checking that I'm not missing anything, but everything behind it is in shadow. So basically I'm tinting the paper around the face, the color of shadow, and then it's just another color of paper and then into that you can draw whatever you need to draw. So it's not as though that's the end of the cat, it's just it's just a functional thing. Okay, and the only the reason I'm stopping is I'm looking where the ear is, so I need to move my ear up a little bit. Okay. Um it's that's... a little hard to see what you're doing this... the camera's a little bit dim. Oh no, okay, wait. Maybe my light needs to come. Is that better? I can zoom in. Not really. Not really? Wait. Oops. I don't know what's happening. Oh. Hang on. I'm trying to zoom in. I just want to get... Okay. And then 
Hang on. Does that help at all? Is it bad for everybody? Or is it okay? It's okay? All right. Um, the, yeah, there's not much I can do this, I suppose. And I'll try and move this light around. I think that's about as be as good as it gets. So um, I can zoom in a little bit more. Um, let me just finish the shading. Let me look at your pictures and then I'll zoom into uh, the muzzle. I'm going to be doing the muzzle. So and I'm going to leave out the pore. So I'm just finishing. This is there's not much. my computer brightness. Sorry. Oh, oh, okay, all right. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Okay. All right, so I'm just putting shade around the cat. I'm taking out the paw because I don't really want the paw. And uh, just bringing it up. The ears are light, so I want to be careful I don't get rid of too many bits of the ear and I just need to check to see what happens oh there's no more to the photograph okay um okay so we don't have all the ears the ears are disappearing all right okay so I'm being quite vague over here because I I'm not quite sure where I'm going to end up with the ears because I haven't quite thought about it enough yet. I just want to get that done. Okay, so um, I'm pleased with that because I've got the general cat shape. The face is a little bit off, but I can adjust that. Um, and the light part is now standing out against the um, shadow part, so that's working quite nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to move this out of the way because it doesn't, I don't know if it helps. Um, I would love to look at your pictures. So I am going to switch to looking at a picture of you. And then, okay, so Katie May and Maya, can you show me yours first if you're ready? Oh, beautiful. Hey, that's just really nice, lovely. Excellent. All right, so the only thing, because it's that good, if you look at the cat picture, okay, I'm just gonna put it over here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so the no, the muzzle part, it goes around and then it curves the other way. It's kind of like an S shape on both sides. So And that's because of the shape of the nose. So it goes out around the cheek that bulges and then as the nose goes in, it curves inwards. And these are just little subtle things that take you to the next level, that's all. So yeah, everything else is just lovely. So that would be the only thing, yeah. All right, Katie Mae, would you like to show me yours? Very nice. I love that. Yeah, you actually have that nice S shape on the muzzle, which is great. And then, yeah, I think that's great. So just when you are doing the fur, just, you know, be brave with your little lines that cut into the white to give that furry look. And I think, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Do you have questions or problems or anything? You're okay? All right, good. All right, Edward and Emma, can you show me your pictures if you're ready? All right. Edward's not available. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, very nice. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful, Emma. Hang on, don't take it away. I'm enjoying it. It's really nice. I love your marks. I love those beautiful little marks you made for the fur. That's really it's, nice. Yeah. The, the cat's fur looks like it's lines, so I drew those. Exactly. That's what I was saying. And your lines are just so nice. They're very, um, they're beautifully done. They've got such a nice shape to them. That's really good, Emma. Yeah, lovely. Excellent job. So everything's going okay? You Do you have questions yes. or anything? No. Okay, I love it. Very nice, very inspiring. Okay, we have, um, okay, Lydia. Oh, lovely.
lovely. Wow. Your eyes look very nice. I love it. Those are like magical cat's eyes. It's like a special cat. I love it. They're full of life. And your nose looks beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Are you happy with the way they turned out? Yeah? Okay. Do you have any questions, problems, anything else you need help with? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, I really like your cat. All right, Helen, would you like to show me yours? I just kind of started on the background because I was working on the mouth. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, no, no, no. There's no there's no correct speed of doing it. I am very slow generally. That looks really nice actually. So when the only thing I would say is when you're, I mean, I really like your lines actually on the face, but too many of them and then you don't notice them so much. So where you're putting the fur in, like on the side, on the left, just cut into those lines a little bit. So it ends up looking like kind of an eyelash feel or a, or, or a jagged comb or something, you know, so break through that line a little bit. I know it's kind of when you got the line, you kind of want to stick with it, but make yourself go through it just a little bit. But not everywhere, because I actually like those strong lines. That looks really nice. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Do you have any questions, anything you need help with? All right. Okay. Uh, Olivia. Oh, beautiful. That looks really nice. You've got, yeah, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, I would just say with the second eye, make the pupil darker, but I have a feeling you're going to do that anyway, so... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it's lovely. I love the green in your eyes. It's kind of a golden green. It's really nice. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Do you have uh, questions or anything you need help with? Um, no. You're on it. Okay. All right, then Kaya, would you like to show me yours? Hang on, just a sec. Okay. Oh, lovely. That is so nice. I love all the different cats. It's like, you know, every cat has a different personality. It's really cool. I love the way you're doing your fur. That's really nice. That's just lovely. That's, you know, very good drawing that because every mark is exploring the color and the shape and the angle and making it look like fur. It's really good. And I love um, the blue in that one eye. I like the colors and they're so bright. Yeah, I think it's great. Lovely. Do you have any questions? No. All right. Then I will carry on. Okay. All right. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit because I... Th or maybe I'm not. No, you know what? I'm going to zoom in just a little bit actually because I want to get to the muzzle. Okay. So I'm going to do the muzzle around the nose and I'm zooming in so this is I've zoomed in pretty far in on my phone so I can see what's going on and I'm just going to enjoy the shadows because I really like shadows so I've got my no this is not gray this is green okay my gray pencil okay so we're just starting on the shadow around the nose oh, I think we stopped with that last time so I'm back to that shadow just using grey just to plot out the shadow. And so I'm using a little bit of, you know, just general shading and then just remembering to bring a little bit of the fur back. And I may, I wonder, I'm wondering, no, I think I'm going to use it. I was thinking about using my mechanical pencil, but I actually like the grey. All right, so the shadow is just really showing the soft shape of this muzzle. And so one of the things to look at is where the shadow is the darkest. Um, and so, and there's not, I mean, it's very subtle, but as the nose touches the muzzle, that's where it gets darker. So I'm starting by the nose and then I'm pulling my pencil outwards so that as it lifts off the paper, it gets lighter. And then obviously following the shape of the or sorry, the angle or the direction, that's the word, of the fur. 
All right, and then on the other side, so there's a line obviously over here. And on one side it goes one way, and on the other side it goes the other way. All right. And then just noticing that the shadow is darker on the outside. So these are these little, you know, where the, what are they called, whiskers come out? There's little shadow lines. And as they get closer to the nose on this side, they get a little, um, oh, excuse me, a little fainter. And then they get a little darker as they come this way. And that also helps to give the shape. And also just the feeling of the light in the room and the air in the room. So it's all, it all helps to make the picture look real. So it's not just getting it looking like a photograph. It's getting everything to relate to everything else, including what's behind the object. All right, and then back here it gets a little darker. There's a lot of detail in this cat. Okay, um, yeah, I'm going to carry on. Let me go down here. So the chin is generally a little bit darker than the muzzle, so I'm just going to shade that a tone darker. So I'm just tinting my paper a little shadow color and just by doing that, although you can't see because uh, I need to zoom out. Uh, okay. So just I shaded my chin just a little bit darker and it pushes it back. So now the chin, maybe I'll give it a little bit more just to show you. So it pushes it back from the muzzle. So the white parts are going to be the most prominent and then everything else that's a tone darker is going to look further back. So now into that, although I need to sharpen my pencil, I'm going to put those fur lines. And then this is just taking the background shadow and breaking it through the line of the chin just so it looks like fur. And you know what, it's kind of bluey, so I am going to give it a little blue. And this shadow could do with being a touch blue as well. So the blue would is going to work nicely. So shadows, well, white tends to be, even, you know, whether it's sunlight or from lights in the house, tends to be yellowish unless you've got a blue or a white, white bulb tends to be yellowish, so the shadows tend to go blue. So that's one of the reasons I'm putting that in. But it also, because the nose is pink, having a blue shadow makes the nose stand out and makes pushes the shadow further back. So it's nice to add blue into the shadows for that reason. Okay, so we're getting there. And I'm going to put a little blue in the background too. give it a little bit more darkness because it's the chin is disappearing into the background and you you know with any drawing you don't have to do every single thing in the picture so you know with the back I said I was going to draw into the background but maybe I just don't need to there's like there's a kind of a mystery to where this is pop, uh, well, not popping out, emerging. It's like it's ghost, ghostly. It's emerging from the background, and that's kind of nice. So maybe you'd, I don't even need to put the shoulders and anything else in. I'll just kind of leave it as shadow. But one thing I do want is to get this chin to look like it's more solid. So I'm doing that because it's light. I can't really, unless I have a white pencil, I can't really draw into the chin to make it more solid so I just have to make the background a little less light and then hopefully the chin will pop out. It seems to be doing that. Okay so this is working and you know the little bit of struggle that you have always helps because having to do all those layers to figure out how something is going to work 
um, actually gives this really nice mystery to the colors and the shading. It's like you're not quite sure how you got there, but you got there. And it's just, I don't know, mystery. I was telling my, my other class before you about adding mystery to your pictures, not making everything too clear because it just makes it more interesting to look at. So it's happening in this picture too. Okay, so it's a little bearded chin, but it's solid. All right, I wanna go back, where's my gray? Because time is always getting the better of us. I wanna get back to the, at least one of the cheeks. I'm gonna do this cheek. So I just want to, um, oops, add a little more to the fur. So I'm just gonna go back to the eye and just work outwards. And yeah, I just wanted to get the feeling of this kind of le leaning out or suspended over the darkness in the background. So I just want to work that until we can get that feel. All right, so as I'm doing this, it's blending the color underneath, which is quite nice. It kind of, it's actually softening the fur. It actually makes the cat look very silky. So I quite like that, even though the fur, the actual lines that make it look like fur are disappearing, it's still kind of nice. Okay. And then this is kind of light over here. All right, so we're over here. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this dark so I know I, this is actually I'm making a line I'm deliberately making a line because I, it's like this hand of fur that's sticking out over the darkness so I want to get an edge so I'm doing this then I see it goes under here so I'm going to do that and then just have to look okay so the shadow at this point just goes under the mouth Okay, so even though I'm doing stuff up here, it all relates to everything else. All right, and then just coloring this in. So we're still in the coloring in stage. And then I'm gonna add a little blue and I'm actually going to add a little purple to that too. And then I may smudge it a little bit because it's a, um, a, what I want is the stuff in front to be in focus and the stuff behind to be out of focus. So I have a purple. So purple just enhances the blue. It's just um, a lot, artists will put purple or a purple blue into the black of their pictures if the black is in the background. And that really does help push everything back. Oh, all right, I'm gonna have to use my, I thought I had a paper towel. It is no longer there. Okay, so it's not, fingers are, well, they're okay. I mean, they actually make very good tools. It's just, there are better things to rub with. All right, okay, well, that'll do. Okay, so that looks good. That's a nice start. And then I'm just going to do what I did over here, except I want to make it a little sharper. So I'm trying to get the shadow into the fur. But there are these clumps of, you know, stiff fur sticking out so I want to try and keep that feeling so I'm not being too wispy with my marks I'm being a little bit precise to get that feel and it's you know it's a little bit of an experiment you do it and then you see what it looks like and where it's going wrong and then you fix or you figure out how to fix what's not working and on it goes but if you have lots of time that's the fun part. All right. If you have questions, just let me know. Real quick, do we have to do the background? Oh no, you don't. Um, you mean like the, like the body? 
Or, or what do you mean? Like, like the, um, like the blackness that you're doing. Oh no, it's just the reason I'm, no, you don't have to do that. The only reason I'm doing it is to enhance this. It's just taking a little longer. So yeah, you don't have to do that. And I'm going to I'm move away from it because time is ticking. But yeah, if you want to do the other stuff, you can. This is just because I wanted to get this feeling of this fur coming out. It's just, you know, because what I, I wanted to do it. But you don't have to. Yeah, if this is there something you want me to work on other than this? If there's anything that you would like me to work on, just let me know. All right, well it's it's getting there i'm gonna actually work back in here because everything actually relates to everything else so i'm just gonna work back into that cheek and i'm gonna actually use a little brow let me find my brow okay so i'm gonna just bring some patterns in so this is kind of a light brow uh, Actually, that's not too bad. It's a little bit red. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is make a little bit of a darker patch over here. And I quite like, you know, so I have not found the brown that I was hoping for, but all these other browns are actually making a really nice color around here. So it's getting a little redder. Um, than it is in the picture, and so the eyes are looking greener because of it. And then I'm going to actually use a pencil over here because my grey is not dark enough. So this is this is actually just a mechanical pencil, but the nice thing about this is it keeps sharp. And for something like this, you kind of want your pencil sharp to get the details to look good. Okay, so this is not too bad. I'm just going to zoom in to see what that fur is actually doing around here. Making it a little bit lighter because it's catching the light. And it's also going a little bit silvery, so another reason why it's nice to do little light pencil marks. back to brown over here. It's a little shadow and marking over here. And I think it's a little darker. So just using the color by itself is not making it dark enough. So that's why I'm going back and forth between the pencil and the color. Okay, and then... All right, so I, I'm just gonna do a little bit on the nose. And then I'll look at your pictures again. So I just want to get up to the um, forehead. So I my marks are, I'm still doing them going across the nose, even though they look like they're going upwards. I, I like them going across the nose because they, they make it look rounder. But then up here, when we get past the eyes, I'm making them go straight up into the forehead. Okay. 
And it joins together over there. So this, you just, you know, this is, again, I mean, it, it's just looking at where it goes lighter, where it goes darker. So it's, it's darker in the center, and then it goes lighter on the side. It's part shadow, part more markings. And then this looks like it comes out kind of like an eyebrow over here. And then we have one coming out of here on this side. Okay, so my cat's not looking too bad. The red is quite nice, actually. I quite like that color. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna use the pencil just to make it a little darker because it's pretty black. And then I would like to look at your pictures and I need to check the time. So, okay, we've still got time. All right. Okay, so let me, well, this is kind of obvious. You just make this dark. I'm not taking my dark. So I've got the red down, which is, you know, kind of a medium tone as well as being red. And now I'm putting my pencil on to make it darker. I want to make it get lighter as we come down the nose so I'm not pressing quite so hard and I also didn't take my pencil right to the edge of the red I let the red just be there so kind of like the way the white is or the gray at that point is just kind of you know fading into the other color so it's kind of soft so I that's why I didn't take the pencil to the edge I can always come back and add more but it's it's so you know if you have it's basically it's the same thing it's as we do with shading kind of just getting the edges not to be quite so harsh because the more edge you have the less it looks three-dimensional so I'm just kind of finding a way not to have an edge and I'm quite pleased so yeah I mean most of my drawing I think you've heard me say that is you know my drawings not they don't always go right it's quite a it's quite fun when they actually do go right because most of the time I think they're going to go wrong but this fur part is actually working better than I expected. It actually looks quite nice. Okay, so it's starting to... Actually, so I like it because it's got a texture of the fur and also the softness of the skin. You know, so if you stroke a cat on the forehead, it tends to have this soft feel over there. So my marks are actually doing that, which was mostly accident just observation and accident so I'm quite pleased about that all right so I'm gonna reshape the side of the head and I'm actually gonna do that with the shadow behind so the reason I'm doing the background again is not because of the background but because I want to shape the head a little bit more I'm just just putting the shadow down okay so it looks more like that shape this is a little wider over here so I'm just redrawing the furry edge more into the background so a little bit further down just to give it give the cat a bit more of a cheek over there and then I just because that got a little darker I want to make the background darker still so that the cheek doesn't look too, um, just checking it out, so it doesn't look too dark. Okay. So I'm not trying to make it look too much like the photograph, I just want it not to look too caricaturish. I just, you know, the photograph is there to guide me as to what a cat looks like, and then I'll go as much as I need into it, and if it looks fine and I'm happy with it, then it doesn't have to look like the cat anymore. As long as it looks like a cat. Okay, so I'm just checking to see if that... Yeah, I think that works. Okay. So really just getting a suggestion of the side of the face, which is a little flat over here. It could do with being a little softer, but it's generally got the cat shape, which I quite like. I have to check. Okay, yeah, it looks better. It looks more like a 
wild cat than a domesticated cat. All right, so just let me fix this one more time, make the ear look a little smaller. And then, okay, okay, she's less, it's less wild catish. Okay, I am going to look at your pictures again. All right, so Katie May and Maya, you're at the top again. Oh, nice. Well, that's lovely. Excellent. I love it. The, yeah, really nice. The fur looks great. And I really like the way you've got more of the detail in the center by the nose and the eyes and the, and the bridge of the nose. And then it just fades away into the background. That's great. So yours works fine. Yeah, so you don't actually need the background on yours. You were the one that asked me about the background. Yeah, so that, yeah, it was a good question because it actually looks great without it. So, yeah. I, I like your I like your cat. Maya, would you like to show me yours? Oh that's very nice. Yeah, I, I like the background works on yours because you've got a lot of white in the face, which is nice. So the grey in the background really brings that out. So I would say with the background just make it a little longer so it's echoing the shape of the face which is fine because when you're doing it that's what you're doing but then it looks like it's clinging to the face so if you just make it like an inch long it happens to me all the time you just have to make it a little bit longer and then it'll be background and not a frame yeah it looks good i like it it makes your white really bright okay uh edward and emma would you like to show me yours Oh, wow, you work extremely fast. <laughs> that looks beautiful, Emma. Thanks. I love it. And the ears are very nice. You don't actually have to put anything in the ears. It's really nice just as a design thing to have e those ears just like that. And then all the fur in the center. It's really beautiful. Lovely. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Do you have questions or are you happy? No. Yeah, no, that's an excellent drawing, Emma. Really nice. Thanks. All right, I love it. Edward, would you like to show me yours? Okay. Um, I just came back, so I didn't do much. Oh, that's okay. But it looks nice. You've started the fur, and your ear shape looks great. Eyes look great. It's actually very nice. Yeah, it's lovely. And, you know, yours probably doesn't even need that much fur. It's up to you how much fur you want to put in, because it's like part line, part texture. So... You, you know, it's, you really don't have to finish it off exactly like the photograph. Do you have questions? No. All right. All right. Uh, Lydia. Yeah. Oh, very nice. That's a, hang on, a little bit, there we go. I like the background. The background works, I mean, as a frame, it's just, it's a nice tone. You put a little blue in, it seems. Is that correct? Because it, it makes the fur nice and red, which, I mean, not bright red, but it just makes it warm, makes it comes towards us, makes it come towards us. It's just lovely. And you dr you've drawn it so well. It's really nicely in proportion. And your fur looks very authentically furry. And eyes and nose look authentically eyes and nosy. And it's just nice to look at. Your marks look really good. Yeah, I love it. Are you happy with it? Excellent. Questions? Okay. Yeah, very nice. All right. Um, who else? Okay, Halen. So um, I kind of did it as my cat. I have a picture of her right here, so I kind of did her coloring and stuff. I like it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm regretting choosing a grayish cat because I like the color. I like the orangey color. So, yeah, no, that's lovely. I really like it. It, it may need because It may need a neck. It's up to you. Okay, because it just because you've got a, a line all the way around, it just feels like it might need even just a, like a suggestion, a little bit of a neck. That's all. Um, but otherwise, and the only reason I say that is because it's a little distracting. It catches your attention, like the Cheshire Cat. I don't know if you've read Alice in Wonderland, but there's the Cheshire Cat. So it, it kind of grabs your attention like that, which, 
if you want it in the picture is great but if you don't then you probably just want to avoid the attention there but it's nice I really think it's strong your lines look really good do you have questions no thank you all right all right Kaya hang on all right oh nice I like that it's very nice and soft I can really feel the fur so I would say maybe um, you know on the right hand side I think it works you may not need to do too much fur on the cheek but on the left hand side cheek it's a little angular so and you're probably going to work into that anyway you probably haven't just got there yet so there will be that and then the chin could be a little smaller so if you look in the photograph it's the cat has a really tiny chin and it's just not that that's wrong, it just is more cat-like if you have these little tiny chins. But otherwise it's great. And I love the markings on the forehead. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I like it. Background looks good too. Do you have questions? All right. And Olivia. Oh, beautiful. Very nice. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right, so I would say um, with yours, just maybe making the chin a little bit pointier. Just, you know, because it does have kind of a V shape to it. So that would be one thing. And then, you know, your fur marks around the nose, uh, between the eyes, are really nice. So, and you've done a little bit more in the eyes. So if you can do a little bit more of that. I mean, if you filled the whole face with fur marks, I think it would look really good. Except around the nose, uh, muzzle part, I wouldn't put it there. But I really like those fur marks. So, yeah, I would carry on with that. Okay. Yeah. And your background looks nice. I like that. The color looks really good. So you could also, like um, I'm doing and a couple of others are doing, is put orange in the fur just to brighten it up a bit against the blue. So, yeah, I think that would look nice. All okay. right, do you, it's a pleasure. Do you have questions? Um, no. Okay, all right. Okay, we have, uh, we have about one more minute. Um, so, do you want another lesson on the cat? Or are we done with the cat? You do, okay. Who, okay, hands up, who would like more cat? One more lesson. Okay. Okay, well, if you're finished, you're finished. And Kyra, you're invisible, so I can't tell if you want to or not. <laughs> okay, she does. Okay. All right, so Helen, if you're finished with yours, you could just do a second cat. You know, you could actually find a picture of your cat and just do it along because it's the same thing. I mean, you know, it's fur, nose, eyes, chin, etc. All right, that will be good. Okay, so then, seeing as it's the end of the lesson, it is. No, wait, do we end now? We do end now, don't we? Do you want to do five more minutes or go? F five more minutes, thumbs up. I actually have to go. Okay, all right. I will continue for five minutes. Those that have to go, you can go. All right. Bye, those that have to go. All right. I'm going to pin my picture up and just carry on for a little bit. Okay, I just need to fix this cheek a little bit more. Let me find... I'm going to use my pencil. And I just, it's, it's a little raggedy looking, so I actually want to get it a little softer and smoothly going on into the white and into the nose. The fur keeps changing direction. And then if you follow that, which is a good thing, but it just makes it look a little patchworky. When, when things, you know, I think this happened to me when I was painting portraits of people as well, is that I have this patchworky looking face. And then I just, what I do is I take a brush and just basically blend everything, like give it a rub down with a blending brush, and then everything would join together. So I think that's what I'm doing now with my marks, is I'm just taking my pencil and kind of going a little bit over these shadowy things and then taking them a little bit outside what I've got into that surrounding areas and then it just feels more like it's fitting with everything else. 
And then as we go along, it's as you do this, you kind of calm down and then you see what you need to put in. So over here, it needs to be just a little darker, which I'm going to do with brown. Actually, mine, you know, like I said, the pictures grow and they direct you. And the colors in this, because I couldn't find the ideal brown or the ideal black, I've now had to compromise. And it's actually quite nice. I'm getting these really interesting colors. So I'm going to add a little green and see what happens. I'm putting green on orange. And orange is kind of like a red and red is the opposite of green on the color wheel and so when you mix them together you get a brown but it's actually a very colorful brown because you can still see the orange and you can still see the green and it just makes a really in interesting bright but not too bright color and the only thing so now I'm kind of relaxing into this it takes me a while to get into my drawings but I'm kind of getting into it, the shape's coming out, which is really nice. Um, so I just want to be careful that I don't get rid of all my whites. So, because um, they can't bring them back. It's not like with oil paint, you can definitely bring them back. But with th things like this, you can't. Now, as I said that, I'm going over the white. But this needs a little bit of green. It's slightly greenish over here. All right, and then back to my pencil. I'm just going to bring the fur because I blended this and it smoothed itself out, which was quite nice, but I want a little more detail over here. Yeah, just shaping the eye. It's, it's, yeah, and I think one of the things is you feel like you warm up into your picture, but you actually, I think you just get enough layers down. You know, you put enough marks down that it starts to work. I think you have, if you don't have enough layers of color, it just doesn't do it. So you just got to keep going. And it's that that works. Because it's just suddenly got interesting. So I'm putting a little blue over here because I'm seeing the greys as blue and it's it's quite nice. As long as I've got I keep the bright white down here, I think it's gonna work really well. Alright, and my bright brown, there's a little stain of brown over here. And the fur is so fine over here that I'm just gonna give it a little shade rather than do the actual hair texture. Okay, all right, I think, yeah, things are coming on. My cat has hope. All right, so over here, so I've got my color behind, which looks great, and I just want to bring that fur back a little bit. change my angle of my pencil because the fur is coming down at this point. And this again, I've now got, it's cross hatching, so one hatching, I've said this before, but hatching is just making marks, little marks on your paper, like the way we did the fur. And cross hatching is just crossing it over, which we know all about because we've done it a few times. So this cross hatching part over here is actually 
making the fur look richer. It's actually, actually it's amazing what that does, that cross hatching. It actually looks really soft. I love it. Okay. Um, I'll give you one more minute, but I think probably people are ready for supper and stuff. So I will just give this another layer and then we'll stop. Okay, and actually, instead of that, I'm going to add some green over here. Once you start seeing colors, you start seeing them everywhere. What you thought was brown actually turns out to be a rainbow. It's kind of fun. Better be careful there are ear over here, and then I'm just gonna bring the green up here a little bit. Okay, and then I am gonna stop there. So let's see who is still here. Okay, everybody. All right, do you wanna show me your pictures one more time? Uh, why don't we start, Olivia, you're always last. I'm gonna start with you. You can show me if you want to. Oh, good. Did you add a little bit more fur? Ah, yeah, it looks nice. You put it over the nose. Over the bridge of the nose? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay, great, excellent. Yeah, so we will carry on next time and we can okay. continue that. Yeah, you can work in between now and then if you want to at home. You, you don't have to wait for me, but if you want to, we'll do that. But yeah, lovely. All right, excellent. All right, Kaya, would you like to show me yours? Oh, nice. I like that. What are you, you're rubbing it. Do you, are you erasing the background or are you blending it? Because it looks, it's got a nice texture. Yeah, I'm blending it a little bit. Yeah, I like it. It's got this silky feel to it. It's actually really nice. This is like my, you know, like I said, it was starting to get interesting because I had so many layers and yours is doing the same. I mean, it, not that it wasn't interesting before, but it's got kind of a magic to it. It's really nice. It's, yeah, I love it. Very nice colour you've got in the background. Really enhances the Thank face. You. It's a pleasure. Okay, uh, Edward and Emma, let's have a look at yours. If you want to. So, uh, I put some details on the ears. I looked okay. at the camera and I did this. I like it. Yeah, I the ears work great. They actually um, look really nice with detail on, and they look like they're Maybe. they're twisting back. They look like they're listening to something. It looks great. Beautiful. Yeah. So you may be finished by next week. You may not need another lesson. So we will. I maybe we can have another picture for next week for you. Um, if you're done. But beautiful. Yeah. That that should go on the wall, Emma. You should. You should. Find a frame, put it in the frame, put it on the wall, because it's very nice, lovely. Do you have questions? It's a pleasure. Do you have questions? No? Okay. No. All right, Edward, may I have a look at yours? Or are you, if you want to show me, if you feel like you're still working, you don't have to. Oh, nice. Actually, it's looking great. I really like your pencil marks. It's nice that you've got a little bit of pencil, a little bit of color. That's actually a really nice combination. Yeah. Do you have questions? It looks like it's going well. No, no, no. Okay. All right. Thank you. That was lovely to see. All right, Lydia, let's have a look at your picture. Very nice. Gets better and better. I like the fur. Have you done more to the fur? Is that what you've been doing? Because it looks furrier, softer. I like it. You can make the background a little bit darker, you know, because the face is really strong with the eyes and I think the fur would, I know it's just, it's over the computer so it's hard to see all the details, but I would say you could probably make the background a little bit darker. Yeah, but very nice. I love its long furriness. Very, very nice indeed. All right, Katie May and Maya. Katie actually left. Oh, okay. Oh, beautiful. 
Yeah, that looks really nice. Did you did you work on the muzzle shape? Oh uh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, I like it. It's a very nice cat. It's very strong. I love it. I love your yeah. I love the strong strong marks, the lines, because it's not not so soft. It's not kind of wispy. It's got it's very definite. So it's got a lot of strong personality to it. It's really good. Yeah. The one thing I'd say you might want to put a little bit of the neck and the shoulder in. Just you know, it's got that feeling of being suspended with nothing. It it depends on how the background is working. Sometimes that works, but sometimes it just looks a little headless. I mean, bodiless. You know. So I would say a little bit of the neck. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? I do not. Thank yeah. you. All right. Okay. All right. I think that is everyone. All right. Then I will say good night. Um, and we can do this next week unless you change your mind. And if you're finished, I will get a second something for you to draw that isn't too different. All right. Okay. Have a good Thank evening. You. It's a pleasure. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.